And let's talk about your current portfolio, which is really the mandate that you have is to showcase Kenya. Okay. You are, your, your, your mandate is to be, this is who we are, come visit. You're actually the person who invites guests into a home. Culturally, we are very clear that you're not, you don't send the raggedy person at the back. You're like, the welcome is important. What is it, and what is it around that that uh, Kenya has definitely be, continues to be one of the best destinations yeah. that you can visit, not just in the in the continent but globally. We still have that spot. Mm -hmm. What is it, and when you hear, when you travel, when you go outside, that makes people want to come to Kenya because wildlife is available everywhere. What is it that you have learned over the past couple of years that is important? Well, first we have a unique uh, country. <laughs> We have a beautiful country and I'm proud that uh, we have what uh, holiday makers want to see in any destination. We have the beach, we have a safari, we have the people. Uh, but definitely it's how you package it. Mm -hmm. So, so we try, I try to package it. When I stand in the international forums and I speak, not necessarily about Kenya direct, people take cognizance of my image, my personality, and the country I come from. Mm -hmm. I make an impact in my statements, and definitely I always use the positive angle of Kenya. Mm -hmm. And I go publicly and acknowledge we had terrorism attacks. Yes. We don't have the perfect roads, but we have safe roads as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So always is to think positive. And, 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 and Every person I meet is that they know this is a lifetime dream to come to Kenya. Yes. So I challenge them and I, 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 I express the Kenyan hospitality and generosity to tell them, come, take my number. Even if it's just an ordinary person, what would it cost me to pick a telephone call of an ordinary person who says, oh, I booked my, my, my holidays. I'm in Kenya, I just called to greet you. It doesn't cost, doesn't me cost anything. anything. But it's a big deal. It is. That person it has is. called, managed to talk to the Minister of Tourism of Kenya. And if it is the Minister of Tourism going to bring you here, then I will be there to welcome you to Kenya. I like that you talked about honesty because I think a lot of times, and, and one of the things in this Edelman survey that was done, is that no one expects things to be perfect, but they expect the leadership to take ownership of that. So you standing up and saying, we are not perfect. Does that always go down well? Or is there a lot more backlash? Or do you feel that that honesty and being candid is appreciated? Uh, first of all, uh, always people shy off. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to acknowledge their weaknesses. I am one of the persons that in government, I acknowledge we have a problem. And our responsibility, because we are privileged to serve the people of Kenya, we should be the champions of resolving that problem. It can take time, some time, mm -hmm. but I'll be honest to acknowledge it and to show a way of trying to address that problem. So, like I enjoy my tourism docket very much. I have a wonderful relationship with my private sector. I have an open door policy. Anybody can access me, yeah. I can be able to talk to them candidly. They can tell me candidly of what the problems are, not only their problem, but also problems in government. Mm -hmm. And I will accept it and, and, and acknowledge it. But I will tell them that this problem is not mine alone, it's ours together. So you also give me your own opinion how we're going to solve it. So, so this partnership, mm -hmm. which I've enjoyed in the tourism sector, uh, has made me resolve a little problem. When I came in as a, the new minister recently in 2015, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there was VAT on two operators. Yes. There was VAT in uh, park entry fees, and people were really frustrated. We have outpriced our national parks uh, than Tanzania. We were ninety dollars. Tanzania is fifty-three dollars. Yeah. So this is ridiculous. The product where, is also uh, the animals are the same. Yeah, and and we are the ones who are chasing people from the country. So the first thing the industry did when I was announced as a minister they held a party for me, welcoming party. <laughs> so then a few of the old guys uh, who just told me off and told me, welcome, 
but I don't, we don't see anything because this government is not interested in tourism and look at what they have done, VAT, VAT, VAT and the numbers have gone down and today we are less than a million tourists. So I said, my God, this is the biggest challenge. And I know the policy on VAT. Yes. That there cannot be any service without VAT. It has to be VATed. So I took the privilege. I'm the advisor of the president on tourism. So I had a session with the president. I discussed with him. I showed him rationally what the impact of what we have done. Comprehensive. And I'm glad the president is a listener. Instantly, he called the respected cabinet secretaries in charge of what has happened, called us in a, in a, in a meeting. Immediately, he ordered he wants this to be resolved. Within two months of being in an office, we have abolished visas for children under 16. We have abolished VAT on park entry fees on two operators which now people can book online. They don't have to book Kenyan companies, and Kenyan companies now are losing business, but they can book online without paying VAT to anybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. So all that, but again, that information was not shared. That was not shared. Yeah. This has done, okay, take it or leave it yeah. attitude. Yeah. Is where, where there is resistance. Yes, yeah. in everything. In, in everything. everything. In and, everything and, 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 and I mentioned to you earlier, the key thing is information. Yes. And nowadays people are not stupid, people are educated. People have traveled, they have, they're exposed. They know if, if you don't remove VAT from a booking <laughs> platform, yes. it will be done through another booking platform which doesn't have VAT. Yes. So you are losing business. What is your added advantage? What is it that makes you unique? Why should I spend my money with you? So, so those yeah. are the issues, and I'm glad and, uh, and, and I appreciate His Excellency the President immediately did this. We saw the numbers coming quickly. We have recovered for the last year, year compared to 2017, 10%, mm. despite all the challenges. All the challenges. Six months, we had, we had really aggressive, violent campaign mm -hmm. up to December, and we were 10%. Our revenues, we have never, and I've served this ministry before, yeah, we have clocked 1. 120 billion Kenya shillings, which we have never clocked in any one given. Even at 2011, which was the highest mark of 1.8 million arrivals, mm -hmm. we were 98 billion Kenya shillings. So not only are you getting more people, they're spending more. More money. More money is actually yes, coming into the yes. economy. I think you raise a very critical point and maybe one that that we tend to shy away from or one that's a difficult thing. You talk about two things and, and, and I want us to just delve on that a little bit more. You talk about communication and in one of the things that has come up in the Edelman Trust is that communication is becoming sources of information are becoming yes. so fragmented. Mm -hmm. The social media saying this, there is this happening. Yeah. But at the end of it, when people want to verify the truth, they go to traditional media. So actually trust in traditional media is going up. Mm -hmm. This is not a Kenya phenomenon. It's not an Africa. It's a global phenomenon. As 2018 has been dubbed the year or we are regaining trust. This is the year that we are getting our trust back. Yeah. What do you think that you can do better? And, and partly the, the reason I ask this is for you, you have been engaged on social media. You have actually even started working with people who are doing millennial travel, which is yes. totally different from traditional tourism travel. But you've gotten engaged in that space. Yeah. What is it that you're seeing that's exciting in that space that you're like, we need to tap into this. We need to figure out how to navigate this space. I, I think we need to come out from our cocoon of traditional and conventional ways. Mm -hmm. That's why we need to change our marketing strategy. Marketing strategy of tourism is not putting billboards, is not printing brochures, is a digital platform. 80% of our tourists who come to this country, they come because they have done a search on the social platform, mm -hmm. the digital platform. Mm -hmm. and, and that is where we should now focus yes. on marketing Kenya. We want, we are used to old people going for holidays. 
Nowadays, everybody can go to it. The millennials, yes, they have the money, they're curious, they're adventurous. That's why I said, if it takes the Minister of Tourism to be the leader of being adventurous, I'll jump from the plane. And I did it. You climbed the mountain? Yes. And if it's to create a new product, interesting. Why can't we just climb the mountain? I trusted, I want to do it. I, did. I didn't even train, but I had the conviction that I have to do this one. And I was committed. You're a better person than me. There's no way I'd even try that mountain. <laughs> how, how did it feel coming back down though? I mean... It was tiring. Yeah. Uh, it was really tiring. I, I went with a colleague and uh, I thought he jogs every day five kilometers. And he took one week off while I took two days off and the third day I was at work. The mountain is not about <laughs> fitness. It's about this. So it's You're about right. The mind. It's about it's your about mind. The mind yes. I like... Well, let's, we've talked a lot about other people coming. Let's talk about us exploring our country. Let's talk about the fact that you've started engaging people to say, wait a minute, what do you know about Northern Kenya? Mm -hmm. And that you're dealing with millennials on this. Yes. Why is it important for you that we as Kenyans mm -hmm. continue this tourism? Why well, is it important? Well, well, well first of all, I've, I've, uh, I'm a marketer. I know, I know what, how to get into the market. I realize the trends have changed. Mm -hmm. The baby boomers and the millennials are the people who have the money and they'll move. I went to Meta. Yes. I went to Meta, I met young people. Age my children. I tried to be as young as they are, <laughs> but I couldn't fit. But I can tell you, I learned much more than I think they learned from me. New thinking, new behaviors, new ideas. I directed my Kenya Tourism Board to spend time and spend time with the young people. Even just for nothing, but you're going to learn a lot in changing the way we do things conventionally. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and I appreciated that. Yeah. So, so, so we cannot ignore any segment of the market and that's a futuristic segment, the millennials. Yeah. And they have the money, they're educated, they're mm -hmm. exposed, but they're impatient. Yes. So they don't want to waste their times uh, and queue for one and a half hours on an immigration counter at the Kijomo Kenyatta airport. No. That's why when I'm getting frustrated, I'm bringing clients to Kenya. And then the biggest obstacle is my border point at Jomo Kenyatta. I shared this again with my president. Instantly he took action, put three ministers together and says, don't give me an excuse. You either do your job or others will do it in this country. Yes. We were sent there and today I've received reports of Jomo Kenyatta. It's not perfect, but there has been major improvement. Courtesies. We have given training at Utali College on, on customer care. Yes. We have seen uh, all other processes. Immigration, I want to congratulate the immigration department. They have gone out of their way to make sure those cues are better. So not all of us will fit in and do better, but at least most of us are making an effort. And we need to reward that effort. Yes. Yeah, so that people can feel it's worth it.